previously on the Seegers family edifice venture. I am in Summit, New Jersey with Warren, my husband, who is filming the DIY Network's 2009 Stud Finder competition. The shoot was a blast, but we were not able to tell anyone the results until November 20th, 2009. It was now late October. And that means it's going to be really cold working at the building and we want to try to put up some insulation and make it a little bit more comfortable. To do this, we had to seal off the east and north exterior walls a little better. With the help of the boys, the window went in quick. Thank you. You're welcome. November 20th, 2009. Family and friends gathered together to watch my appearance on DIY Network Stud Finder 2009. So did I win? Kaylee McCabe, your DIY Network's next step. I want to you. It didn't take long for the kids to do their normal kid activities to put a smile back on my face. If you like our video series, you'll love our website. Check it out at www.edificeventure.com. See pictures, read blogs, find cool links, plus tips to help you on your own home improvement projects. Yeah, we got four kids, a cat and a dog, and we're looking for an open space. Where we can stretch our legs and start a new life and build us a greener place. A structure stood with no inner walls and a big hole in the roof. And now it's hard to build the American dream. Brother, this is living proof. Seekers fan the edifice venture. Show you something that you've never seen. The Seekers Family Edifice Venture is sponsored in part by. Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County, building decent, affordable housing with people in need. WVPE 88.1, a NPR station. Inform, entertain, inspire. Anco Products Incorporated, our energy saves you energy. And Heritage Antique Lumber, crafting fine furniture, custom cabinetry, and trim using lumber from historic barns. It's December 21st and Warren is already out on Christmas break as a teacher. Now the kids still had school today, so we are taking full advantage of the day out here without the kids. We are doing some insulation up here in the studio and office areas today because here in Northern Indiana, it's cold. See my get up? So the more that we can insulate and block off rooms, the easier it's gonna be to hold in some heat and work out here. We are insulating the building with texture fine fiberglass insulation by Anco Products, which is recognized by engineers, contractors, and architects for its high tensile strength and resiliency. We like it because it's easy to install. Each roll is cut to fit between the 16 inch on center studs on its own. That's right, no staples required. The only needed tool is a utility knife. Simply roll it out, place it in the studs, and cut to length. Those areas that are smaller than 16 inch on center, not a problem. We just cut it to size and tuck it in. When you open one of these up, it kind of reminds me of a marshmallow in a microwave. Poof! As we put the insulation up, we realized we were missing one important item for our quest for heat, a heater. The only heating element we had was a salamander, and that was neither efficient or proving to be safe. It's about burnt my leg because it's catching my, burning the rubber on my boots. What was burning the rubber on your boots? The, uh, the big heater back here. After doing a little research, we concluded we had two options for heating the building, forced air and radiant heat. We knew with forced air, we would need a minimum of two heating units and have to add all new ducts. We also found on a building this size, forced air would not be very efficient. The only thing we knew about radiant heat is that it would be more efficient than forced air. How it works and how it is installed left a lot of questions in our minds. A friend, Naomi Green, suggested Penny Call Nibco, a local company to us, but known worldwide for its radiant heat products. Penny met with Randy Doring and Don Ford to explain our heating dilemma. With our project being somewhat unusual, Dawn wanted to come out to see the building before she started working on the plans for our radiant system. The current structure of the building would dictate how the radiant heat would be installed. 
There are several different methods in which you can use to install a radiant system. You can install it into a concrete slab. You can install it between joists. You can also create a thin slab, like for a first floor, and it doesn't create as much weight on the structure as it would with, with a full concrete slab. Or you can use baseboard heaters. Our project will require three of the four methods of installation and will be completed in three phases. The staple-up method between the joists will be used on the mid-level in Phase 1. In Phase 2 of the upper level, baseboard heaters will be installed. Phase 3 will require a new slab to be poured after the radiant system is installed in the lower level of the building. It's January 17, 2010. NIPCO came in a couple days ago and they uh, did a walkthrough and told us everything we have to do on our part so that the installation is ready to go for when they come in. One of those things that we have to do is we're going to have to clear the bottom floor underneath the joists of all nails and screws, anything that can poke and put holes in the tubing. The second thing we had to do is we have to move all the stuff that's stored downstairs out of the way so they can do their installation. So instead of just moving the stuff around back and forth, what we're going to do is go through all the items we have stored down there and figure out what things we can just put where they need to go. Example, the doors, we can put those in the rooms up here uh, for where they're going to go. And the drywall would be another thing. We're going to go ahead and take that drywall and just put it up on the walls. That way we only move the stuff once. Work smarter, not harder. So we prepped the building for phase one of the installation of the radiant heat system. During the next few months, we completed many projects, but we are going to skip ahead in our story and come back to them later. On July 13, 2010, our radiant heat system for all three stages was delivered. I was a little surprised that everything fit in one van. I imagined it would be delivered on a semi with boxes and boxes of parts that I would find confusing. But that wasn't the case. All of a sudden I felt at ease and confident that Penny and I would be able to learn how to install a staple up radiant heat system and complete the job ourselves. Up next on the Seegers Family Edifice Venture, the NIPCO Radiant Heat Team shows us how to install a staple up system. Since the early 1960s, Texture Fine Insulation has been an environmentally friendly product. Our unique process diverts millions of pounds of fiberglass scrap from landfills each year. Today, high quality standards have made ANCO Products a world class industry leader in high tensile strength resilient insulation products. ANCO Products include laminated metal building insulation, insulated flexible duct system, and indoor air quality, Green Guard certified Texture Fine Insulation. Green isn't a new initiative, we started in the 60s. ANCO Products, our energy saves you energy. July 14th, 2010. The NIPCO Radiant Heat Team came to the building to train us on how to install a staple up system. We were excited to learn something new and somewhat on the cutting edge. I say new and cutting edge, but radiant heat has been around for a long time. The biggest difference between the old way of doing radiant, like in the early 1900s, versus the modern way that radiant is done today is that you're not going to have a big cast iron radiator like you would at your grandma's house where it's out in the open, it takes up a lot of space. Today's radiant heating systems use the floor as the main emitter. Uh, and that's what transfers heat into the room. So the entire floor of your home would be warm. Now radiant is completely unseen except for usually in a mechanical room where you'll have your parts. Before starting, NIPCO assessed the area one more time to make sure everything was ready for installation. The first task is to install the radiant heat transfer plates. These are metal plates about four feet long and four or six inches wide, which attach to the bottom of the subfloor. They conduct heat from the tubing to the floor that you're heating. Installing the plates was a fairly easy job. The only tools needed were ladders and drills. We worked in teams of two. One person would hold the plate while the other person would set the screws. Each plate has six screws to attach them to the underside of the subfloor with screws. Proper placement of the plates is important. 
When you're placing the transfer plate in between the joists, you want to create a gap in between them. You don't want to place them end to end, butt them up end to end. So anywhere from a one to a six inch gap is suffice, and it just depends upon the length of the entire bay that you're working in. You'll configure how many you need. These are standard four foot length transfer plates. And once you have that, then it'll give you some playroom to know how many you'll need and how much room that you can have in between both of them. What can happen if you place the transfer plates end to end to where they're touching is it could create a click noise or, or chatter. You want to have about an inch from each joist. It just allows so that way when we're running the tubing, you want to have an eight inch center and this would be a standard 16 inch joist bay. So that way when you're bending it, it, it provides for an eight inch bend. It took all morning to put the plates up in one section, but finally the last screw went in. So what was the next step? We need to feed the tubing through the joists and weave it in and out of the plates and snap it in. Installing the PEX tubing went much quicker than installing the heat transfer plates. A complete run is called a loop. The start of a loop is called the send and the end of a loop the return. The send and return always originate in the same location, creating a loop. A loop cannot exceed 250 feet. Don't worry about exceeding that amount. Nipco PEX comes in the maximum allowed length. When pulling a loop, you may wonder if you have enough PEX to run back to the originating point. Pull it through all the way, but leave enough to get back to there. Get back. And then back to the manifold. You won't find yourself pulling all that PEX back because you are a few inches short. The total number of feet is marked on the PEX tubing so you know exactly how much is left. Don't wander off. We're not done with this job. We still have to finish this section of the Radiant Staple Up system. Ertugentic Lumber is a small family run business. We reclaim lumber and we turn it into something you can be proud of and you will be happy with. The uniqueness of our cabinetry is one of a kind. Heritage Antique Lumber makes furniture, crafts, mirrors, frames, and more using reclaimed barn wood. We at Heritage Antique Lumber consider ourselves more than just craftsmen. We are also artists. Visit our website and see our quality. HeritageAntiqueLumber.com If you like the Seegers Family Ed's Adventure on television, then you should like us on Facebook. Find us by logging on to Facebook and do a keyword search for Ed the Fist Venture. And don't forget to like us. installation of the PEX tubing was moving along smooth. I couldn't believe how simple it was and how few tools were needed. Only ladders and a drill were needed to put the heat transfer plates up. The PEX tubing portion of the project only added a hammer to the tool list. It was needed to hit the nails in that held the talons up. Talons are hooks much like wire staples but bigger. They hold the PEX send and return runs to the wall keeping them organized and untangled. As we were installing the system, Penny and I wondered how Radiant actually heats the home and why it's more efficient than forced air. Forced air, or scorched air as we call it in the Radiant heating industry, moves hot air into your room and then moves cold air out and cycles that way. It's constantly blowing hot, dry air into your home. With Radiant heat systems, it's a little bit different. You're heating the objects in a room. So uh, the best analogy that I could give you is it, it, it's kind of like on a fall day and it's cloudy and you're outside and there's a break in the clouds and the sun comes through. And when the sun hits your face, you feel immediate warmth. Now the temperature of the air hasn't changed during that time period, but you feel a lot more comfortable because of that radiant heat from the sun is hitting your face. The same way in a home, when you put a radiant heat system in your home, it will heat the floor, uh, your furniture, the objects in the room, and is a much more comfortable system. Once the plates were up and the PEX tubing run, it was time to mount the manifolds. There are two manifolds, one for the send and one for the return. 
A large PEX tube will run from the heating element to the said manifold where the loops begin. We are only showing one for demonstration purposes. The return manifold receives the loops returning and feeds into another large PEX tube that runs back to the heating element to reheat the cooled water. Once the manifolds were installed and the completed loops connected, our training session was over and we were left to complete the staple up ourselves. We decided we're going to so put this in a panorama box so it looks like a piece of modern art. So we had a lot of plates to put up, followed by a lot of pecs to run. How do we keep our motivation up with a job this size? Make it fun. What I'm going to do is give us a challenge that we finish this whole section right here in 60 minutes. And here's how I suggest we do it. You help me hold them and just screw them into place. And then we'll start from the outside and work and meet in the middle and put all the screws in. The total area we were working on was 2,400 square feet. We already completed 600 square feet, leaving 1,800 square feet. The home theater was getting baseboard heaters, so we can subtract another 600 square feet, which left 1,200 square feet for us to work on. Oh yeah, that doesn't include the 280 square feet for the kitchen. This may take a little longer than we thought to complete. We finally finished and completed a complete zone which was a total of 1,200 square feet of the original 2,400 square feet. Coming up next on the Seegers Family Edifice Venture, we'll tell you how many screws we used on the install. Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County does more than build houses for those in need. They provide education on personal finance, homeownership, parenting, and other life skills to help those moving into these houses turn them into homes. Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County, working with people from all walks of life to build simple, decent, affordable homes. For more information on how you can help, visit www.habitatec.com. The Seagrass Family Edifice Venture is sponsored in part by Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County, building decent, affordable housing with people in need. WVPE 88.1, a NPR station. Inform, entertain, inspire. Anco Products Incorporated, our energy saves you energy. And Heritage Antique Lumber, crafting fine furniture, custom cabinetry, and trim using lumber from historic barns. Labor Day 2010 and we are going to be putting the labor in Labor Day by finishing all the prep work for our radiant heat. Now to date we've put in over 2,000 screws in our heat transfer plates and we have about 500 more to go. The other things that we're going to do today is we're going to drill all of our holes for the tubing to make our runs and we're also going to get rid of any screws that have the potential of poking through the tubing. That way when we're ready to run tubing, we can just go. Besides screws, we had a nail here and there to pull. The nails came out easy, the screws, not so much. I always like to think that power tools are the answer to every single home improvement problem. Today, not so much the case. The problem we have is we have screws that are poking through the floorboards that actually create a problem that they might actually puncture our Durapex tubing. So my idea was to use this rotary tool with a sanding disc or a grinding disc and grind off all the screw, screw tips from the bottom of the floor. The air volume that's needed to run this rotary tool is way too high compared to the output of our air compressor. So this is not going to be very efficient for removing the screw tips from the floorboards. So I've decided to go back to the old manual labor way and use a hammer and bust the tips off. 
The screws that we use in the floorboards here, they have strength in holding, but actually hitting them on the side, they're very brittle and the tips will bust right off without ruining any of the gripping power of holding the floor together. After putting the last screw in the last plate, we did the math again. We have put in a 497 heat transfer plate. At six screws per plate, that equals, ta-da, a grand total of 2,982 screws. It may seem like a lot of work to install a staple up radiant heat system for a building this size, but a forced air system would have been much more difficult. We like the fact each loop can be controlled by an independent valve and is a continuous run from send to the return. We feel we made the right choice with radiant heat for the many benefits it holds. The main benefit to a radiant heating system is the comfort. But in addition to that, uh, it is a more efficient system of heating than forced air. And one reason for that is that you're using the medium of water to transfer the heat from one place to another, from the heat source to the room. Uh, and water is much easier to pump than air. You'll notice that your ducts on a forced air system may be a foot or two wide, whereas with radiant heating, you're only pushing uh, water through a pipe that's maybe one inch in diameter. We're not gonna have the allergens and dust and things like that flying all around the house through the, the duct work like you're gonna have with a forced air system. So it's perfect for people that are a little bit older as well as small children, anybody who suffers with, with allergies, radiant is by far top choice over forced air for health benefits. Another reason radiant heating is more efficient than forced air is that because you're much more comfortable and you don't have uh, hot air blowing around the home, people tend to set their thermostats two or three degrees cooler and they're still very comfortable. Uh, so every degree that you drop your thermostat means you save money on your heating bill. PEX has a lot of benefits uh, over copper systems. First of all, PEX is a flexible material. Copper is very rigid. And so with PEX, you can bend it around corners, you can eliminate elbows. PEX is going to be less expensive to purchase than copper tubing, as well as the flexibility of the pipe. It makes it easier to install, less time for the contractor or the homeowner that's installing it. It's, it's bendable. It just it makes for a much easier and cost-effective install.